The apartment was eerily still, but then Liam realized something was amiss. The door to the room wasn't fully shut, and through the small gap, he could hear a man's voice. Out of habit, and to avoid disturbing the sleeping child, Liam crept closer to the door. The voices became more distinct, though he couldn't quite make them out. The woman sounded like his wife Olivia, if it weren't for the lighthearted tone and carefree laughter. Why the rush? He's away today and won't be back for a while. We've got the whole day ahead. I'll cook up some potatoes with mushrooms for you. He got some nice mushrooms and pork the other day. And how does he not know anything yet? Come on. By the way, his paycheck is coming in two days, so you'll need to give me some cash, and then I'll transfer it to our account like usual. It's piling up nicely. Did you see last month's statement? You could have taken more, but then we'd have nothing to eat. And this old car, always falling apart. It gobbles up money for gas and repairs. Last night, he was out all evening, fixing something at her place. Come on over while Maya's asleep. She's growing up so well with me. And as soon as your hubby's horns come through the door, their laughter swallowed the end of her sentence. Liam couldn't take it any longer and stepped forward, pushing the door open. He saw Olivia on their bed, clad in a sheer red negligee. Her face was nestled against the man's chest, while his hands, covered in coarse black hair, were caressing her body, tracing down her back, and beginning to lift the negligee. It was clear he intended to remove it. Without waiting for Olivia to be fully undressed, Liam asked. Does Luke go through this too? Olivia froze in shock, leaping off the bed and turning to face him with wide, painted eyes. Liam observed her with a hint of disdain, taking in her vivid makeup, bright lipstick, eyes heavily lined with shadow and eyeliner. She had never worn such makeup for him. He'd never seen this negligee before. His clothes were always kept in a small, separate locker in the hallway. Olivia composed herself quickly, realizing Liam must have overheard much of their conversation. With a frigid expression, she retrieved a robe from a nearby chair. The man under the covers began to dress, pulling on his pants. Liam watched them with a detached calmness, a gaze that Olivia found unbearable and oppressive. I don't know who this Luke of yours is, Olivia said, her voice icy. I was just starting to date your brother then and you married me because of the pregnancy. I got what I wanted. As for Luke, I don't care who his father is. What am I supposed to tell my daughter now, that her mother left with another man? Liam pondered. He knew that Luke, the eldest boy, was not his biological child. Ten years ago, Olivia had been seeing his brother, and after his tragic death, she came to their family, claiming she was pregnant with his child. She anticipated that his family would support her and the baby. In the final stages of her pregnancy, she agreed to marry his brother, thus making Liam the legal father of his nephew. As these thoughts raced through Liam's mind, he returned to the present moment. By now, the man was nearly dressed. He remained silent, and there was little left to say. Olivia stood in the middle of the bedroom, uncertain of her next move, from the look in her husband's eyes, she realized that her charade of being a devoted wife had come to an end. Perhaps she was just as fed up with it all as he was. He had become nothing but a nuisance to her, much like Luke. Liam issued his decree. Take your child and go. In court, we'll formally separate the children. Your Maya will stay with you, and Luke will come to me. You won't need to return the money from your account. I won't report you for fraud. Yet. If you cause any more trouble, I'll request paternity tests for both children, so don't expect any alimony. You can keep the apartment in the event of a divorce. Any questions? Olivia wordlessly retrieved a large bag and began packing her clothes from the chiffonier. Bright blouses and colorful dresses appeared, clothes Liam had never seen her wear. He usually saw her in the evenings, exhausted and irritable, clad in housecoats. These outfits seemed intended for someone else's gaze. How blind he had been. The man quietly approached the crib and picked up the child in his arms. 
After dressing the child and collecting their belongings, they left the apartment. Finally, Olivia dropped the keys on the hallway floor and slammed the door behind her. For the first time, Liam felt a deep sense of relief, as if he had been released from the cage in which he had been imprisoned for many years. He sank into a chair, staring blankly at the floor. He replayed the events in his mind, questioning if he had made the right decisions or if things could have unfolded differently. He felt no regret about letting the younger child go with her mother. Olivia had been perpetually preoccupied with the temperamental Mia and had rarely allowed Liam any time with her. Admittedly, he hadn't pushed too hard. He was worn out from work and had to contend with the older Luke as well. Even though Olivia had not worked after her first pregnancy or during her second, she had scarcely been involved with her eldest child. Liam now recognized that she had displayed almost no genuine maternal affection for Luke. It was clear that Olivia had used her first child to coerce him and his family into providing support. This realization was stark, but Liam had come to love Luke deeply. In the wake of his brother's death, he had been drawn to the newborn, feeling a profound pity and attachment. He had grown to love him as his own son, and it was right for him to stay with Liam. His prospects with his mother were surely grim. Liam glanced around the now empty apartment. It seemed larger, quieter somehow. There would be no more greetings tainted with arguments, constant complaints or accusations. Yet, how would he explain to Luke that his mother was no longer going to live with them? How would the child cope with such a change? His heart ached at the thought of picking him up from school soon. The car. In his distraction, he had forgotten about Matthew who was waiting at the entrance with the money for spare parts. Liam hurriedly stood up and checked the sideboard, only to find it empty. Olivia had taken all the money when she left, and he hadn't even noticed. Liam went outside to meet Matthew and got into the car. The man awaited an explanation in silence. There's no money, and my wife is gone too. I caught her with her lover and threw them out, Liam said his tone calm and measured, as he stared straight ahead. I just saw them, Matthew replied understandingly, getting into a taxi with their luggage. He started the old Ford, and they drove to the workshop. The men came out of the workshop. Dissatisfaction with the prolonged wait was written on their faces. They must have finished their work by now. Matthew told Liam to stay in the car while he went to talk to the workers. Soon he returned and started the car. We've pooled together to buy the parts, Matthew said. You can pay us back when you're able. Do you have any money for food? Thank you. I'll get my salary in a couple of days and settle everything then, Liam replied. And where's your Luke? Matthew inquired sympathetically. Liam was a regular customer, which was understandable given the state of his car, more of a rusted wreck than a vehicle. Luke often accompanied his father, sitting in the back seat and doing his homework while the men worked on the car. Initially, they were surprised he wasn't left at home, but they grew accustomed to it, as well as to the sight of Liam rushing off to buy buns for him. They knew Liam and Luke hadn't had a proper dinner at home. It was peculiar that while Olivia, the unemployed wife, stayed home on maternity leave with their youngest, the eldest was at school all day and then on extended leave. Liam clearly didn't rush home in the evenings. It seemed he preferred feeding his son store-bought snacks over having a home-cooked meal. The men looked silently and sympathetically at the little boy in the backseat. When Liam went to the store, they fetched water and turned on the old electric kettle, a routine they had adopted. They suggested he use their cups from the tent to make tea or coffee for himself and his son, rather than going dry. Luke's at school. Liam said, his brow furrowed. When would you like to pick him up? I'll take you to the school. We can handle the spare parts ourselves. Which school is he at? Matthew asked calmly, his tone businesslike, but with an undercurrent of sympathy. It was clear that Liam's presence at the workshop wasn't necessary. As they drove toward the school gates, Matthew handed Liam a slightly crumpled piece of paper. Here, this should help until you get paid. You can repay me later. I'll call you when the car is ready, maybe tonight. 
maybe tomorrow. Depends on how things go. Matthew then shifted the conversation to the repairs, noticing that Liam's eyes were welling up with tears. It was evident that Liam was going through a tough time. Perhaps now he might have a chance to rebuild his life. Lion was standing in his usual place. There was still almost half an hour before the bell rang. He took his time. He was lost in thought, trying to figure out how to break the news to Luke and what to say to him. Maybe it would be better to wait until they get home and then explain everything in the apartment. But what exactly should he say and how? Amidst these somber reflections, Scarlet arrived in her blue car. Noticing the empty space where Liam's car usually parked, she assumed his pensive and troubled demeanor was due to car troubles. Is there something wrong with your car? Do you need any help? She asked, her tone calm and unconcerned. Thanks, but I sent it for repairs this morning, Liam replied. I arrived early today. I was worried about being late so I left with some extra time to spare. Well, it's better than rushing and worrying about the baby, Scarlet said with a reassuring smile. Actually, why don't we give you a ride? We have plenty of time, Scarlet offered. John will finish his homework quickly after. Grateful for the offer, Liam and the kids happily accepted. They all piled into the clean, pleasantly fragrant car and the children chatted excitedly in the backseat. Liam directed them to the school, and once they arrived, Luke and John asked to play a bit longer on the playground. As they watched the children happily running around the old carousals and climbing the slide, Scarlet turned to Liam and said, John's birthday is in two weeks. Would you and Luke like to come over for a visit? John struggles to get along with other kids. He hasn't had many friends before. I was worried he wouldn't settle into his new place easily. John mentioned you have a younger child, too. It would mean a lot to us if you could all come. Without warning, Liam blurted out, Luke and his mother left us today for another man. He hadn't intended to share this with someone he had only known for a couple of days, but the words felt like a weight lifting off his shoulders. It was as if acknowledging his wife's departure out loud made it more final, as if he needed to vocalize it to truly accept and believe in the reality of the situation. Scarlet took his hand gently, looking into his eyes. Her gaze was not filled with pity or sympathy, but with understanding and support. You'll get through this, she said softly. At first, it will be tough and strange, filled with pain from betrayal and resentment, but it will get easier. I know because I've been through it, it became easier for me when I stopped dwelling on him and moved him out of my thoughts. You'll find your way too. Just remind yourself often that what's happening is for the best.